Louisiana has lost enough land and it doesn't need to lose any more. And so me being somebody that lives on the coast cannot let it be that somewhere somebody is going to say that this place doesn't exist anymore. No, it still does exist. So in that perspective, right, in that idea, um, that's another reason why I wrote that, that this place is still alive. See, for us, our trouble is mainly not so much what's going on on the island, but it's what's going on around the island, all right? And, and whenever it comes to dealing with these changes, um, in 2007, they completed this small little uh, drainage system that only protects us from high tide. Say like before 2007, say on a day like this, whenever we get in this strong south wind, well, in three or four days, if that wind didn't stop and the tide didn't go back out, well, we had water right here where we at. So with them completing this little levee system, um, just for high tide, well then that saved the grounds right here from always being underwater during this time. But it's not hurricane protection, you know, it's just high water protection. So whenever it comes to saving the land and dealing with the, the changes to the environment, this little drainage system serves as a good example that if you can do something somewhere, you can actually save it, you know. And, and just this little bit of work that they done, um, we did benefit from it. And we still benefit from it. And it does work. So, um, so I know that whenever it comes to talking about land loss, you know, um, it's a lot of money to deal with. But, but whenever you begin looking at the small examples of things that they know how to do up to now, a little in this process, you know, um, is uh, Chief Albert Nakam. The He is the uh, chief of Allegene Charles of the Island Tribe. Okay, that's of itself, uh, of the Island Tribe, all right? And so he's been pushing for relocation since the early 2000s. And the, the thing about the relocation to him is the preservation of the community of Allergene Charles. Before, because of too many changes and too many other reasons, that we'd be all scattered out here and there. So in an effort to keep what's remaining of the island together, uh, he's been pushing for uh, the relocation uh, to higher ground for the last 20 years. And so, um, he has had more than one effort in, in doing this, you know, openly, very publicly uh, uh, about it, you know. And, um, and so that didn't sit well with us because he was actually going against the grain. But I've always knew why he was doing that. You know, 20 years ago, um, if you was going to ask me if I was going to move, I was going to tell you no because I wasn't ready at that time. But, but do you know it took 20 years for me to just get to that point. So there, there was a, um, like, almost like a breakdown. Not because, not because of him, but because of, you know, the, the things that has been going on, you know, uh, with the environment, you know. And, and so uh, making that decision, this is where the problem's at. Because of the changes of the environment, that's what forced me to make that decision. Not a celebration of getting a new house, not the celebration of moving to higher ground, but to have to make the decision to relocate to some other place. That's, that's tearing me apart, to be honest with you, because I never lived no other place but over here. I don't know where to live. I don't know what it is to live any other place but over here. So um, that's something new to me. And so to be forced to make that decision um, because of the changes of the environment, 
I'm still I'm still adapting to that. I'm still I'm still trying to not say in confusion and anxiety, but I'm I'm still trying to adapt to that. You know, to work my way to that, even though I did say yeah. So it's like one step at a time. I'm just trying to work at that. You know. And that's where I'm at with that.